Okay, I want to begin with my thank yous to ACTRA Toronto, of course, and to all of you for honoring me with this award. To all of my teachers who saw something special in me and nurtured it, my peers, co-workers, teammates, mentors, Celia Chassels who empowered me to take on the world. Where are you, Celia? Everyone at GGA, past and present, my agent, Emma, my employers and partners and nearest and dearest and bestest friends who are here tonight, for all the canceled Europe trips and canceled plans and all the things that being friends with an actor just, just sucks sometimes. So thank you. Also for your love and support over the years. My family, who is also here tonight. My mummy, my dad, hello and thank you. My grandparents, all of these guys who sat in front rows for every single even crappy show I've done over the last 30 years, cheering me on the same way that they would tonight, so thank you. My husband, my beautiful, talented, supportive, incredible husband, and my two children, also my <laughs> best, my best production so far, so thank you. And my sisters, my amazing, talented sisters who have given me everything that I could ever dream of um, as an actor and a woman and a mother and a person who is constantly insecure about what she's doing in life and they're constantly reminding me that what I'm doing is important, so thank you. I am one of the lucky ones. I've had so much support through my life and I'm living proof that what you nurture grows. So, I feel so grateful to be here. It's an incredible honor and a privilege to have a career as an actor. It's one of those only careers, you know, like when you're a kid and you tell people that you want to be an actor, they never actually believe that you will be or that you can be. They're just like, oh, you're cute. Um, so yes, I feel really grateful. I stand here 30 years into this career that I dreamed of doing when I was a child, and I feel pretty grateful. On the topic of gratitude and privilege, I want to take a moment to acknowledge and recognize all of the people that came before me. On my mother's side, I'm Anishinaabe, Lene Lenape, and Métis. I come from a long line of leaders, advocates, medicine people, many of whom were persecuted, murdered, imprisoned, stolen, and sent away to residential school in Indian hospitals or disenfranchised. On my father's side, I'm Jewish. I descend from musicians, entrepreneurs, and artists who were persecuted, dehumanized, and sent to concentration camps. It is not lost on me that I have been pulled my entire life towards a career of storytelling, mining for the truth, advocating for equity, equality, and love. It makes perfect sense that I have been gifted an opportunity that my ancestors did not have, a voice and a platform. But don't get me wrong, when this all began, all I wanted to do was sing and dance. I just was that kid. There was a stage, I was on it. My oldest friend here, Deb Goldblatt, she can attest to the fact that from grade three on, I was a performer. I did everything possible to put on a show and she was my biggest, my only at the time, fan. <laughs> and, you know, today she's known as a PR maven. Deborah Goldblatt of Rocket Promotions, and I believe that I was her first client in grade three. <laughs> so you can thank me later. In elementary school, she was showing me off, making me sing and dance, you know, dance, monkey, dance. Just, let's, let's make friends and have people stop bullying us. <laughs> and in grade six, she introduced me to the drama club at the local synagogue. That's where that came from. And that's where my dreams of being a performer really took form. And my dreams really did become a reality, but they moved a lot more slowly than I had imagined they would. About four years into my professional career, I realized that being an actor on TV and movies had less to do with my love of it and everything to do with the platform that it provided me. This became clear to me after a, a movie called Dance Me Outside. Although I'd already been working in the industry, you know, with Sonia Smith and the Diviners and Jani Lauzon and Tantu Cardinal. This was the movie that changed everything. 
What happened after this movie is very important to my life story. The film was so successful and I became a you know, critically acclaimed actor, but I wasn't working. I wasn't working at all, I couldn't get an audition. But what I was doing was, was I was traveling across Canada and the US to work with Native youth. And it was during this time that I realized that the movie made me more relevant on a national level. It opened the door to opportunities in the indigenous community, community that I wouldn't otherwise have had. And I found myself doing the most important work I had ever done in my life. Hell yes. In many ways, being an actor was the gateway to becoming a youth worker, a keynote speaker, a workshop facilitator, and an arts educator, working with youth who had little opportunity to harness their potential and dream big. And over time, the work became overwhelming, all-consuming, the suicide, the substance abuse, the poverty, and the everyday effects of intergenerational trauma proved to be more than I could deal with. And I began to lose hope. I lost hope in the system. I lost hope in my ability. I lost hope in the industry. I lost hope in everything. And there was little to nothing that reflected any kind of meaningful reflection or narrative about Indigenous people and communities, urban, rural, historical, contemporary. I realized that Indigenous people everywhere were still being persecuted and that's why the mainstream, st mainstream wasn't telling those stories, because it is shameful, shameful that our society was thriving while indigenous people were continuing to be re-traumatized by legislation and systemic racism. And that is when I began receiving messages from the universe, from the creator, from my ancestors. I'm not sure, maybe all the Tatiana Maslani's in my head. I don't know where the messages were coming from, but they said, continue your work as a storyteller, change the conversation, shift the narrative, harness all the platforms, tell the truth, stand up for what's right, represent your community, speak for those who can't speak for themselves, and raise awareness and build capacity. And that's when and why I became a producer. I felt so desperate for change, and I knew that I had to be part of creating that change. I was just so tired of seeing indigenous stories filtered through a colonial lens, celebrating the colonial experience and delegitimizing indigenous perspectives and experience. And I believe that the absence of those stories and representations perpetuates very harmful narratives about us, about indigenous people, which in turn, in turn creates divisiveness, apathy, and ignorance. If indigenous perspectives were woven into the Canadian narrative by way of film and television in an authentic and meaningful way, I believe that we could save lives, inspire hope, build bridges between people and communities who are now divided. <laughs> Just a short story. In the summer of 2003, I was shooting Moccasin Flats. And by the way, thank you, Tantu, for being in the show. You made the show uh, actually mean something because no one else believed in us, but you did, so thank you. Um, one of the mandates of the show was to create jobs for at-risk youth living in what was known at the time as Canada's worst neighborhood. We employed 50 youth who worked behind the scenes and in front of the camera. Some were gang members, some were prostitutes, some were just trying to survive. I worked with parole officers one-on-one, -on -one, the police, everyone I could to ensure that those who needed, needed it the most were given a fair chance at employment. By the end of the first season, the police chief in Regina told me that crime in North Central Regina went down 80% because of moccasin flats. And I still work with some of those youth. Some of them are in prison, some of them are on parole, some of them have made amazing careers for themselves in the arts, in politics, in film and television. And I'm telling you this story because as an actor or producer, I often hear people say, it's not like we're saving lives, but I think they're wrong. I think that the work that we do, the industry that we're in, and the stories we collectively tell do have the power to save lives. And I also think that when we see reflections of ourselves in the media we consume, it has a way of validating our existence and empowering us to stand tall, stand up, speak out, and do amazing things. And when we don't 
see ourselves reflected in the media we consume, we feel invisible, unimportant, othered, and less than. So tonight, as I stand before you, so grateful to have been recognized by my peers, I remind you that we all have the opportunity to make our work matter. And if you're lucky, if you're really lucky, you will be given a platform where you will have the opportunity to speak out and speak up and just maybe someone who really needs it will be listening and you will change and maybe even save someone's life. So thank you for this. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to everyone who is supporting me through this. I love you. Peace. Miigwech.